One of the most frustrating things in application development can be simply building an application that uses a database, which let's face it is pretty much all applications. And the reason for this is because you can't see the database. You can't see what's in it. And so we generally install third party tools and administration tools and things like that. And sometimes that's kind of a mess. But if you're working with MongoDB or Azure Cosmos DB, you don't have to do that. All you need is the Cosmos DB extension for Visual Studio Code. Let's take a look at how that works. The first thing you need to do is install the Cosmos DB extension for Visual Studio Code, which you can do from the extensions gallery. If you just search for Cosmos, that will bring up the Cosmos DB extension for Visual Studio Code. Now you don't have to be using Cosmos DB to enjoy this extension. It also works for any MongoDB database, which is really nice. Once you have the extension installed, it will show up in the left-hand side under a new section here. And you can expand any of your Azure subscriptions to see any of the Cosmos DB instances that are listed underneath your subscription. Once you see the databases here, you can now interact with them. So we could pick one of these databases here. Uh, let's just pick this one here. And we can view all of the databases that are inside. So we can take a look at this one here. And then inside of that, we can see the different collections. If I was to click on one of these collections here, we see the documents underneath. If I want to see all of the documents, I could just right click and say, open collection, and that will open the entire collection for us to take a look at and all the documents that are inside. If I want to take a look at one of the single documents, I just need to click on that specific document ID, and then I see just that document. I can also create a new database with this tool. So I could click the plus sign, select my subscription, select a new resource group here, and provide a new Cosmos DB account name. So we'll just call this new Cosmos account and it will create a new Cosmos DB database for us in Azure. Pretty nice. I can also create a new database inside an existing Cosmos DB instance if I want to by just right clicking and saying create database. I can also just right click this Cosmos DB instance and if I want to look at it in the Azure portal, just say open in portal, it'll open an internet browser and take me directly to this Cosmos DB instance inside of the Azure portal. And just like I can create another database, I can easily create a collection also by right clicking. So I can right click and say, create collection, enter a new collection. And now I have a new collection inside of the to-dos database just here. Now we've already talked about how you can see the data inside of a database. So to go back here to the admin, let's pull up this uh, heroes database. We'll say uh, open collection and that'll show us all of the records inside. Now, not only can you see the data, but you can actually change it here as well. So if I came here and just put an exclamation mark, to save that, and it asks us, do you want to upload this file to the server to save it? Do you want to upload it and have me not ask you again or just cancel, you don't want to upload it at all? If I say upload, my changes are now persisted to my Cosmos DB instance, which is in Azure. Now, you might not want to edit documents this way, especially if your collection is quite large and you have a lot of documents. This could be really slow. So there's another option for working with MongoDB databases within Azure, and that's called Mongo Scrapbooks. So we can open the command palette, which is command shift P on Mac or control shift P on Windows and just type in Mongo and we can choose a new Mongo scrapbook. Now Mongo scrapbooks allow us to execute commands against our database, but which database are we connected to? Well, let's go back and find out the admin here. Let's say we're currently connected to to do's, but let's say we wanted to look at the admin. Let's go ahead and connect there. And now you can see we're connected. If we go back to our scrapbook, we can now type DB and then hit a period and we get IntelliSense on which databases or which collections are in our database rather. So let's select our heroes database here and then if we hit another dot you can see these are all of the different APIs that we have access to and these are this is the MongoDB API. So if I wanted to find or display all of the records in that database I could just execute a find. Now to execute this command I got two options. One option is to open the command palette. Remember that's command shift P or control shift P for Windows. And then I can just say execute command. And if I do that, it'll run this and we get back all of our records. Now the other option here, there's a keyboard shortcut for this and that is command and then double quote. So it's the key right to the left of the inner key and it's command shift, cause that's how you get the double quote, that key. And that will do the same thing. We'll execute the command and bring us back the records. Likewise, if we wanted to update, it might be a better idea to do that update here by running a command like this instead of trying to update it visually if we have a large collection of documents. Mongo scrapbooks are a really powerful way for you to query your database, uh, work with records inside of the database as you're developing your applications. 
Now, as I said, this extension is also good for working with any MongoDB database. So if you have Mongo installed on your own machine, you can open the command palette and say Mongo, and then choose launch shell. So when we launch the shell, this launches my Mongo shell locally, since I have MongoDB installed locally. And you can see here, it's telling me that it's running right here, MongoDB 127.0.0.1 on port 27017. So I'm gonna copy this. I can come back over to our extension here, and we can go down in the extension, collapse the Azure subscription to attach database accounts. And if we can expand that, you can see my local instance is here. I can attach to any MongoDB instance that's exposed via the MongoDB colon slash slash protocol this way. So I would just right click, say attach database account, pick the MongoDB account, and then copy in my MongoDB path to my database, and I could connect to that here. And then I can look at them just like I would look at my databases in Cosmos DB. So again, I can expand here, go to heroes. This one is actually spelled correctly. Right click it and say open collection. And then I see all of my documents. So that's the Cosmos DB extension for Visual Studio Code. Excellent, of course, for working with Cosmos DB and Azure, but more importantly, excellent for working with any MongoDB database so that you don't have to go to a different tool to work with your database. It's all right inside of Visual Studio Code in the same place you're building your application. That's MongoDB and Visual Studio Code can do that.